Daylighting. Daylighting. Don't you want some daylighting? Daylighting. Now up to this point, we've basically been looking at cases where a daylighting controller is controlling lights in an area where there really isn't any light during no daylight conditions. But when reality rears its ugly head, you're likely to discover that other electric lighting is intruding into your daylit zone. And that's the term I'm going to use. Other general lighting intruding into the daylit zone. When commissioning a system, that has to be taken into account. In other words, the daylighting system has to be set up with other general lighting or any other electric lighting that's normally on during nighttime hours intruding into your daylit zone. So if it has to be set up that way, it has to be acceptance tested that way. But if you're using a light meter method to determine your power reduction, you're going to see this extra illumination. It's not going to go away. It's coming from other general lighting controlled by another source. So what we're going to do is set up our controller with a little bit of electric lighting in there in the first place. And we'll just use the sunlight knob to put it in there. And then when we go into daylight conditions, we'll just add daylight to this initial level. The controller will be told that this is a nighttime setting, right? That it's under no daylight conditions. It doesn't know. And it will be fine with the fact that there's some electric lighting in the room. It has to be. They all have to be. Because that's going to be the case in reality most of the time. So we're going to put in a 10-foot candle of other general lighting intruding into the daylit zone. And then we'll put in 20-foot candles and we'll go ahead and take the combined illuminance reading because the light meter is always reading combined illuminance, whatever it happens to be. If you want a daylight reading off a light meter, you have to remove all the other lighting in the area to get a direct reading. If you want to know the other general lighting and directly read it that is intruding into your daylight space, you would need to shut off the controlled lighting in the daylit zone. But there's no code article that says that a system has to be set up that way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and set this controller up. Then we'll take a look at an analysis. We're going to set it for full output. And we'll take a look at an analysis of the combined illumination. And we're going to see our problem when it comes to determining the power reduction, estimating the power reduction based on illumination reduction. Looking at our original example where we set the controlled lighting in the daylit zone for full output with no other electric lighting intruding into the space, we can see that as daylight comes in, we easily achieve a maximum power reduction in the area whether we are doing fluorescence or LEDs. So the situation looks like this. Um, if we were to calibrate this daylighting system, and by the way as a reminder this is daylight coming in and this is illumination in the area. This is the combined illumination of daylight and electric and this is electric which is the combined with the daylight subtracted out of it. right? And this is the line we're really interested in because this illumination reduction is what we're going to base our power reduction on. Now we can see that if we were to have calibrated the system in this manner when we bring in our other electric illumination, we're going to see of 10 foot candles, that's what we're going to inject first, uh, we'll see that the lights will have reacted immediately and decreased by almost 25% the electric illumination. And so we don't want that. So we would have to set this system up with 
any intruding other general lighting present when we're setting up the closed loop system. And so now our situation looks like this. In the last example, our 42 foot candle reference illuminance was the design illuminance. And it's interesting that we have these two terms because design illuminance is not defined under the code and reference illuminance is probably not properly defined under the code. But for the purposes of our discussion, the design illuminance is the reference illuminance in a daylit zone under automatic control plus any intruding electric lighting in the area. And we can see here now that when we look at what's happening in the area, we're now starting out at 52 foot candles versus 42 because we have an extra 10 foot candles of electric lighting intruding into the area. And that's going to be need to be there when you set up the controller for closed loop control. So this brings us to what do we do about our partial setting? What do we base it on? Well, we can no longer base it on the 42 foot candle reference illuminance. We have to base it on the 52 foot candle design illuminance. So that's what we've done. We would set a partial point slightly above the design illuminance. Now, in this case, with only 10 foot candles intruding in the area, and you can see it right here as the electric lighting goes down to full dimmed down, there's 10 foot candles and whatever small amount of illumination the luminaires are still putting out. So if we are going to be doing our illumination reduction analysis from design illumination, well, we can see it's not going to show us as big a decrease as it did with the original situation where we see it going from 42 down to 2 and some change and here where we're seeing it going from 52 down to 12 and some change. That's not going to yield as big of a illumination reduction as is actually occurring in the controlled lighting in the daylit area. So now when we look at our illumination reduction and our estimated power reduction, you'll see that our estimated power reduction for fluorescent and LED, well, for fluorescent, it's just getting over the mark because we started our analysis at 52 instead of 42, which is what the controlled lighting is actually putting out. So now let's look at a case where our design illuminance and our reference illuminance differ by 20 foot candles of intruding electric lighting. Okay, So now we'll see that under true no daylight conditions with the other 20 foot candles intruding from the electric lighting we're going to be sitting around 61, 62. And as we bring extra daylight into the space we'll be seeing an immediate reduction in the electric lighting as we would expect and our partial will now have to be based on this higher design illumination but if we look at analyzing from that no daylight condition to full daylight condition because we have 20 foot candles well almost half of our full output from the control lighting coming in from another area you'll see that our estimated power reduction does not make it despite the fact that the lights have dimmed as down as far as they're going to go. So in order to get a proper estimation of power reduction by estimating or calculating because this is the combined illumination minus the daylight that gives you the electric in order for this line of illumination reduction from the controlled luminaires in the daylit zone to be meaningful for us we will have to subtract out the amount of offset that we see at the beginning of our graph 
because of the 20 foot candles intruding. So we have an analysis problem here that necessitates us knowing what the intruding lighting is. And we will cover this down the line because this is very confusing. You might be in a situation, and this is probably more often than not, where when you energize the lighting in an area and it contains daylit zones, uh, you can't separately energize them to try and determine how much of this intruding electric lighting there is. And so that's a big, big problem for your analysis. So we have an analysis problem when we're looking at what I call design illumination. This term appears in the code and it appears on the acceptance testing form. And if you look at the acceptance testing form for daylight and continuous dimming, you'll note that there's two slots, one for design illuminance and one for reference illuminance. So this tells us that under certain circumstances, these could be different values. Design illuminance, as far as I'm concerned, and for the purpose of our discussion, is your no daylight illuminance in a daylit zone when you have other general lighting intruding into it. This gives us an analysis problem. <laughs> but if we know what that value is and subtract it off of our readings, we see something very interesting in the response of the electric lighting that's under closed loop daylight control. Now I mentioned that we're going to see something interesting during this section and here's the thing. Suppose I want to put in a really swanky daylighting system. I don't want the electric lighting, let's say, to immediately begin reducing as daylight comes into the area. Suppose I just want the combined illumination to rise up to a point and then take it across. That's kind of a tricky thing, but I think you're going to see what the trick is in just a minute. So starting with our 10-foot candle lighting intrusion example, what do I need to do to get my analysis of this lighting correct? Well, I need to subtract the 10-foot candles out of the combined illumination so that my calculated electric illumination is actually correct. And the same thing goes for my 20 foot candle of intruding lighting. Let's take a look at these graphs because this is pretty interesting. So here is the one for the 10, uh, for the 20 foot candle intrusion. All right. When we subtract 20 foot candles off of the combined lighting, combined illumination, uh, we see that we are going to reduce from 42 to 2 and some change. And that is, in fact, what we're looking for for our analysis. We also have the case of the 10-foot candle offset. And if we subtract the 10-foot candles that we know are intruding into the area from other general lighting, we once again see a line coming down from our reference illuminance that's just produced by the lighting controlled in the daylit zone. But here's the interesting point. If I actually take the daylight or other general lighting illuminance and take it below that offset level where we calibrated it, you can see that the controller is not going to initially respond to this 10 foot candles. Okay, so 10 foot candles of daylight would come in here in a system that is at a reference and design of 42 when it's calibrated for 52. And the way you can do that is simply insert the 10 foot candles, do your nighttime calibration, take the 10 foot candles away, and you're going to get this response, which makes for a very nice system because 10 foot candles has to come into the area before the electric lighting even begins to respond. Now once we've taken into account our other 10 foot candles of electric lighting intruding into the space, we can see that we are indeed meeting our power reduction requirements estimated off the illumination curve. 
So that's what we're after. And we can see that we're also able to produce this radical offset at the beginning of whatever amount we desire. Nonetheless, taking into account that offset, taking into account the intruding lighting, we can indeed still get our required illumination reduction even at 20, 20 foot candles, almost 50% of the light coming into the space being from other general lighting. So you're thinking, remind me again why we have to set up a closed loop uh, daylighting system with the other general lighting uh, intrusion there? Remember from our graphs that this controller is going to seek a set point. It doesn't know the difference between 20 foot candles of electric and 20 foot candles of daylight. So if you don't set the thing up properly, you're going to get a condition where under true no daylight conditions, 3 in the morning, somebody might walk into the area and notice that the lighting by the windows or the skylight has dimmed down. It, it, they can look at the luminaires and see that they're not as bright as the rest of them. That's not good. Uh, in other circumstances, you might have the lighting take a dive when uh, daylighting first, uh, daylight first starts to enter the area, uh, such as a, a primary or secondary side lit, and that would be readily apparent to the room occupants. You don't want that. So what we've seen is that by offsetting the bottom of our response, we can have a closed loop daylighting controller that basically does nothing initially when daylight comes in and then begins to respond. So this is a pretty major trick and remember we fooled one of the simplest controllers in the world. A more advanced controller might actually have settings in software for the initial daylight response point and then a setting for either a partial point or simply the angle of response, if you will, of the combined illumination in the room, which means how fast the electric lighting is taking a dive. So in a more sophisticated modern controller, in a lot of cases, you should be able to just enter these things right in and not fool the system like this. But then again, this should always work. And re remember, Acceptance testing done with other general lighting on in a closed loop system. Open loop, all kinds of tricks you can play. Closed loop, that controller's looking for its set point, and it's going to keep driving the controlled lighting until it finds it.